Bararam, dararam, bararam, dararam, bam, 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 bam. We are in for a treat today, ladies and gentlemen, a true master of the game. We're going to see some excellent comment moves that you might have never seen before. I mean, we start off with an easy, easy example of a simple comment. I mean, what do you think, Joe? Well, I'd say it's textbook, but probably too simple for my taste. Yeah, okay, I see that, but look at this. He's gone into an embedded comment now. This is a file type within a file type. Have you seen moves like this before? This must be some brand new technology to do this kind of thing. It is truly incredible, truly incredible. That was a simple motion to start a comment at the end of the line, the classic GC, GC capital, capital A. A, and now in a different file type, in the same file, he's going to start comments again? Wow. Beautiful. Truly unbelievable. But I think that's enough of this commentary. All right, Take Tuesday, episode two. Here we go. We're going to be talking about commenting plugins. I'm actually going to be focusing on Comment and Vim. That's a new plugin that I'm using for commenting. If you wanted something that's been around for a long time, works well, works in Vim and in NeoVim, I would really, really, really recommend that you check out T Pope's Vim commentary. In fact, I used this plugin for about five years and I've got the proof. Here's a commit from January to 2016. Wow, what was I doing on January 2? I was in school and we were on Christmas break. Ha, nice. Okay. Anyway, so that's why I was playing around with that at the time. So this is a great plugin for you if you want something that works in Vim and NeoVim. And I used it for a long time and I was very happy with the plugin overall. So now you're asking, hey, TJ, why did you switch plugins if you're saying this one's great and it works in Vim and NeoVim and use it for a long time? That's an excellent question, YouTube. I'm happy to answer. The first and primary reason is the ability for tight integration with tree sitter to basically calculate the comment string, which is sort of like the format string effectively that you would want to apply to a line or region to comment out that line or region. So because of that, it lets you work really well inside of mixed file type file types, right? So like if you imagine you're writing view or you're writing TSX or even just like Markdown or other things where you may have some region of text in your buffer that's a different file type than the rest of the buffer, Common Envim works very well with that. The second reason why we want to use this is because it allows for, and I'm, I'm just going to say it, I think they're cute little motions that you can apply to basically move and apply a comment and go immediately into insert mode. Now it saves you effectively no keystrokes, but it feels good when you're typing. So that's always really, really nice. And the last thing that I really like about the plugin as a main high level thing is this distinction within the plugin between line wise comments and block wise comments. And this is basically like if you've written C code before and you know that you want to be able to do sort of a classic C style comment like this, hello, this is a comment, but you also have something like this, this is also a comment. This top comment line here is a line based comment and this section is a block based comment. So I think that this distinction within the plugin allows for some really neat ways of commenting out different regions that I will show you coming right up. So before we get too far into things like configuration and usage and some other parts like that, I just want to show how you can use these different kinds of ideas of line based and region based comments to do some nice stuff. In this case, the first thing that we can do is we can actually use GC. So that's sort of like go comment. At least that's how I put it in my head. And I could say 2J to basically say, let's comment these next two lines. Okay. So GC and then move down 2J. It's going to comment that whole region. So this is really nice, especially when paired with relative numbers, because you can just look at the code and see how far you need to go down. And then you can comment it. And it's the exact same thing to comment and uncomment uh, in these sort of situations where it's very simple. The next thing that you can do though, is notice how this argument named unused arg is unused. 
we can actually do something here to sort of temporarily comment this out and remind ourselves later that we might actually want to use this argument even though we're not today. So if I do GC, right, so go comment and W for word, I actually do the blockwise comment in Lua that just only comments out this unused arg and notice that it keeps this parenthesis outside of a comment so that this is still valid Lua, right? So we understand that I can do, I can go from here, I can comment out just this little block and then I can save that later, maybe as a reminder for me or I'm just hacking on something or I don't want the diagnostic, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of reasons why you might want to try and do that. There's also things like GB2J, which would do something like, let's comment this block or a region, whatever you want to call it. I, I think block is a good way to use it to comment out this block for the next two lines, which lets you do sort of this special kind of comment in Lua again, where you're doing this blockwise comment. Very similar to the idea of this kind of comment in C. Cool, so now that you've seen at least a taste of what the plugin can do, let's walk through how to configure some of the basic key maps. The first part that we would like to explore is when we're looking at this op leader. So op leader, it's a bit confusing if you're not very familiar with the terminology, but operator pending mode is sort of this mode that can take other movements or do other things and then perform an action after you've chosen it. You can read more about it in the help, but basically this is a way for you to choose what characters you want to type before you do two different kinds of commenting. The first one is the line mode. So that's when I comment one single line or block mode, right, where we sort of did this idea before of doing one block. So these are the two different key maps that you can do. I do GC for go comment, that's what I have in my head, and then I have GB, which is not as nice, but go block. I didn't want to type like uh, more letters than that, so GB works for me. I think these are both the defaults, so that works great. The next section to consider is configuring the different mappings. So you can turn on in this mapping section here, a couple different options. The first one is these basic mappings. And I definitely recommend these. Uh, these are what I use daily. I use these all the time when I'm coding GCC. So this is basically right. You have your line comment prefix right here, and then you have C, uh, which does the current line. So you can do GCC, that'll do the whole line, or GCB block comment the whole line. So see how those sort of are working together to continue doing those motions. So you still get this feel of the movements, the motions, all of the stuff that you'd normally expect from things that add a text, you get this just the same working with comments. Other ones that are cool as well is you can do GC and then optionally account and emotion. So if I did GCJ, like I showed before, I'm going to comment those next two lines. So that's what happens when you turn basic on. I definitely recommend these. Now, these options, this, these are the ones that I called a little bit cute and I'm willing to stand by that. So there's three currently extra mappings that you can map that do sort of interesting things. So the first one, GCO, what you want to think about is when you normally type O, right, you start typing here and you can, you're just in insert mode on a new line. Well, GCO, lowercase, will put you on the next line in insert mode, but already with a comment before. So this is kind of nice. I mean, it doesn't save you tons of keystrokes, but it does feel a little bit a little bit cool, a little bit fun, and it's nice to be able to do that quickly and easily. And I think if I got it in my brain a little bit more over the next few months, I'll be using this quite regularly. The other one that's quite nice is GC capital O. So just like capital O lets you start on the line before and go into insert mode and start typing. GC capital O puts you in insert mode, but with a comment prepended. So that's really nice as well. And then I think you'll be able to guess what GC capital A does if you're familiar with other VIM movements, right? Because capital A sends you to the end of the line, so like appending in insert mode. If I do GC A or GC capital A here, I'm already in insert mode there as well. So that's really nice. And then the last one is this idea of extended mappings. These are a bit more complicated. I'd say you can explore the documentation and the source if you're interested in doing these. I have them enabled right now, but I haven't found a lot of use cases where I feel like I need to use them. So the last three areas that we're going to talk about are prehook, posthook, and ignore. Now, if you prefer to use some other plugin to calculate the comment string for a particular line, region, or movement, you can use prehook to actually calculate that instead. So an example of this is if you're using 
context comment string, which is a really popular plugin that I was using for a while as well. You can actually set your prehook to, you can just copy and paste this, of course, um, to calculate all the different types of comments that you might have for embedded files. And I'll show you that in one moment, why that why that comes to play. So this is nice because if you want to do custom logic for certain file types or for certain times of the day, I don't know, it's a function. You can do anything you want. You could actually write that for prehook and make that happen just fine, no problem at all. Post hook also can be used, which will happen after the comment's done. And this might be for some cases where you have, let's say, uh, uh, an if def or you have some other formatting that needs to be applied after you've done the comment. Maybe you want to add spaces, remove spaces, trim, set the right width, do all those kinds of things. Super easy to do using post hook. I don't have any of that set up at this point because I haven't needed it for the languages that I'm currently writing, but I could see if I was writing maybe more like C++ or something, I might want to massage how different if defs might get formatted or I can save the file and maybe I have an auto formatter and that fixes it anyways. No big deal. The last one, which is a nice little addition to this sort of commenting idea is this ignore key, which lets you choose lines that can be ignored if they match a Lua regex. Either you pass a string here directly and then that string is used every time, or you can pass a function that can return a string which will be used as a regex. And if lines match this, then when you do some sort of line wise motion, there won't be any new comments added or removed from that line. So it just lets you control that behavior a little bit more instead of adding bonus comments, maybe in languages that don't need that. So those are the main areas left for the setup function. There's one separate area that we should talk about next. So the last area for configuration is this ability to customize the types of comments that you're using on a per file type basis. So in general, these file types are already added or can be derived from the comment string that's already inside of NeoVim at any given time. However, if you want to customize that or override it or provide additional nodes that may create different types of tree sitter commenting, then that's totally fine. This is the way that you do that. You just require comment.ft. You say for this file type, I would like to have this type of line comment and this type of block comment. So if we were to do something like instead saying that this is how I want all of my line comments to be as well, if I were to do something like comment out this line, notice how now it actually does this in the block comment style. Or if I wanted to change this to say like, this is a comment and I deleted those, right? And I sourced this file again and I commented this line. Notice how it puts this as a comment in front of it. Now those are, I would say, somewhat useless ideas to do exactly like that. But just remember, this is basically a way that you can add your own languages. Maybe you have custom languages or other things that aren't well supported. Super easy to add one line and you're all set. Okay, for my last trick, I'm going to show how this works with just basically in my mind, this is just wild programming languages. You know, I'm not really a front end guy. Lots of you guys know that. You've probably seen my website. Clearly not a front end guy. So this language view has like a bunch of different languages embedded inside of it. We can actually see that on the right side of the screen, right? So when we're looking over here, we can actually see that this part of the code is JavaScript, right? And then we go back into side of this view part of the code. Then we move back inside of view and we see that there's some templating stuff going on that inside of here, it's JavaScript. Again, it goes back to view. Then it goes to CSS and then it's back out to view, right? So inside of this before you would have problems with other types of commenting plugins because it would try and use the same comment string for all of these different file types. And obviously that's not right. You need different file, different comments for things in JavaScript as compared to things in CSS. So let's show you how this would work. I think this is pretty sweet here. Remember how in Lua, when we did something like GCW, we commented out that word. So we can actually do that same thing and note that this highlights it just like it's actually JavaScript, right? But if we were to do something here with GC till this bracket, this actually uses the HTML style of commenting, which is the appropriate style of commenting for this scenario. And then lastly, we can even do this for inside of CSS, do the same style, do everything here. Additionally, it even works to do things like, let's say we were back here and we wanted to comment a block comment GB 
percent notice how we actually just did a block comment from here to there right it actually left the semicolon and the return so it's like you can comment out these individual pieces and this part actually works just out of the box now for comment and vim there's no additional configuration required nothing else that you need to do that part just works out of the box right when you install it you can go and go on your merry way commenting three different file types in one single file all right and with that that's the conclusion of episode two of take tuesday i hope you really liked it I know that this one maybe isn't as wild or crazy as NVIM comp, but I've really enjoyed exploring the plugin, learning more. I, I use comments a lot, right? And we comment a lot of code. So it's nice to be able to quickly comment and uncomment with simple shortcuts. And lastly, if you want more ways to support this kind of work and what I'm doing, my GitHub sponsors is a really great place to be able to do that. I've got a lot of people sponsoring right now and I super appreciate it. If you like this content in particular though, feel free to hop onto the new $2 a month tier, which is just sort of specially cut out as a way to try and get more feedback, solicit ideas, and to keep me motivated to digging into these plugins, spending weeknights recording, getting the editing sorted out, all those sorts of things. It takes a lot of time to make the videos, so every little bit helps and makes it uh, feel appreciated. Ultimately though, I'm just having a lot of fun, and so if you're having fun watching, that's good enough for me. And with that, we're signing off, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye, everybody.